Hey guys, Steve here at SKS Props, and today we're going to be making Mickey's Keyblade from Kingdom Hearts 3. Welcome to the shop. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we'll be coming back with lots more tips and tricks for prop and costume fabrication. In today's build, we're making a Keyblade from Kingdom Hearts 3. Now, some of my friends are huge Kingdom Hearts fans, and they have been on me for years to do some kind of a tutorial on how I would build a Keyblade. I figured this would be a great opportunity to show off this particular one. This is all foam fabricated. It's made out of HD foam, foam clay, and has a little bit of plastic chain on here. So it's lightweight, it is con safe, that's very important. And I wanna show you guys the steps that it took to put this together so you guys can make your own Keyblade. We got a lot to do, so let's get started. The first thing I did was print off the Keyblade template that I had created in Photoshop. You can find a free download for this over in the description section. A PVC pipe is going to be the main core of this key blade. Now this is measured out against the template that I had created and cut down on the bandsaw. At this point I can check and see where the handle is going to stop and then mark that position on the PVC pipe with a permanent marker. I use a sanding sponge to knock down the glossy surface. At this section of the key blade there's a gradual slope that I'm going to be building up using some 10mm HD foam. The HD foam will be glued to the PVC pipe and then tapered using the belt sander. I'm using barge contact cement to adhere the foam to the PVC pipe. I'm continually turning the PVC pipe while sanding to make sure that I get a gradual slope to the foam. I create a basic template out of some packing paper, that way I can make sure that I've got enough 2mm HD foam to completely wrap around the PVC pipe. Then starting with a straight line on one side, I roll the foam completely around the pipe. Now I need to start bulking out the round section to this Keyblade's handle by using strips of 10mm HD foam. Now this part doesn't really have to look pretty because I'm going to finish it off with a 15mm HD foam half round dowel. To bulk out the next section I put my bandsaw's bed at an angle so I can layer strips of 10mm HD foam. These are also glued into place using some barge contact cement and Bob Smith super glue. Using an additional piece of 15mm half round dowel, I complete the lower section of this part. Now you can see at this point it has started to be blocked out. It's not quite big enough, but it gives us a good base. This is a very complex shape on the Keyblade, so rather than making it all out of HD foam, I'm actually going to use some foam clay. For those that have not used foam clay before, you want to wet the surface that you're adhering it to. This will help it stick a little bit better. I like to tear off little bits at a time, and then I wet tongue depressors to actually move the material around. This allows me to get a smooth surface so I won't have to do as much sanding once it dries. We can go in with some sanding sponges in about a day or two and clean this up. So while my foam clay is drying, I'm going to move on to the handle of the Keyblade. It's as simple as cutting out my template, transferring that onto some 10mm HD foam and cutting those out on the bandsaw. This particular Keyblade has a lot of perfect circles on it, so I created a circle cutting jig to help me out. You can see the video of how I created that on my YouTube channel's main page. To cut the middle out of some of the circles, I attached a hole saw to my drill press, which worked great. These are then stacked up and glued together to mimic the artwork. They may not line up perfectly right now, but I take them over to the belt sander and make sure that I have an even surface all the way around each circle. I round over each circle with a medium grit sanding drum on my Fordham rotary tool, and I use a stone bit to help cauterize the outside and the interior of each piece. I go back to the belt sander to clean up the pieces that will be on either side of the handle. The end of the belt sander is perfect for creating the curve that I need. Bob Smith Super Glue is used to adhere these pieces to the circles that I've already cut. The bottom part of the handle is also traced on a 10mm HD foam. This will be layered and then cut to fit. 2mm HD foam is glued on as a layer of detail. It's been about a day and a half and the foam clay has started to harden on the outside. After about 5-7 to seven minutes I've got the shape that I want. Now it would have been really difficult to create this just using foam sheets. To detail this section, I glue a strip of 2mm HD foam directly onto the foam clay. I make a basic pattern for the hourglass shapes out of some bristol board and I transfer that also onto 2mm HD foam. After they're all cut out, I do a basic layout all the way around just to make sure that my spacing is correct. While I let all that dry a little bit more, I jump back down to the handle. I'm working on the lower part of the section. These will be glued directly to the PVC pipe. 
To simulate the leather wrapped handle, I cut a 1 inch strip of 2mm HD foam and slowly work my way down the PVC pipe, being mindful of the spacing. At this point, the lower section of the handle is really starting to come together, and I use additional strips of 15mm half rounds to finish it off. The stars were cut from the template, checked to fit, and then traced onto some 6mm HD foam. These pieces were then carefully cut out on the bandsaw. The edges of the star were rounded down using a rotary tool, and then these were glued into place. To cover up the seams and start laying out the jeweled section for this keyblade, I used some 2mm HD foam. Just like the stars, the screw heads for this were cut out from the templates, checked to fit, and then cut out on the circle jig that I'd used earlier. I used a stone bit on my Fordham rotary tool to round them over, and then I used a stone wheel to cut the channel for the screw. These pieces were then lined up and glued into place. The jewel galaxy section on this keyblade was cut from some 10mm HD foam, rounded over on the belt center and refined using rotary tools. The detail section at the bottom along with the moon were cut from 2mm HD foam. The template for the top of the keyblade was traced onto some 10mm HD foam. I used my bandsaw to cut this out. Now if you've noticed I cut off the circles, I'm going to use my circle jig to make new ones and then just glue them on. The interior detail for this section of the keyblade is cut out and then traced onto a sheet of 2mm HD foam. Now this piece needs to be very precise, so after it's cut to fit and glued into place, I clean up the bottom and back half of it using my belt sander. This piece also gets refined and rounded over using a stone bit. I also cleaned up the circles that would go onto the keyblade itself. One end is cut flat and then glued onto the rest of the blade. Then using some Bob Smith super glue, that part of the blade is glued to the rest of the pipe. Here I'm just checking the construction, making sure I didn't miss anything before I start filling all the gaps with Quick Seal. Now when I use Quick Seal, I like to use some silicone tip tools. This allows me to get the material down into the crevices. After that is applied, I will then dip my fingers in some water and smooth out the surface. This process is repeated on all the gaps throughout the keyblade. The last thing to do is cut out the stars and attach them to the keyblade. Once again, I just have a template. I trace that onto some 2mm HD foam and glue those onto the keyblade using some Bob Smith Super Glue. I'm being very mindful of where these stars need to go. Some of them are helping me cover seams or imperfections that are on the keyblade, but I want to make sure that they're all spread out, not just clumped together. Alright guys, that does it for the construction portion of our keyblade. Now it's time to go on to sealing and priming. Now I did a heat treat over this entire surface. I then went in with some 400 grit sandpaper and lightly buffed the surface to open the pores back up some just so that the Plasti Dip has something to bite into. I'm probably going to do two to three coats on the Plasti Dip and then we'll be able to move on to the rattle can for our base coloring. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Two coats of Plasti Dip were applied to the Keyblade. This seals the foam and gives us a good base for the rattle can colors that'll go down next. After the rattle can base colors are applied, I go in with some Vallejo Silver and an airbrush to help highlight some of the metallic sections. Golden Brand Iridescent Bronze is applied to the Keyblade. Now the pigment count on this particular paint is very high, so it does a fantastic job covering. After applying the iridescent bronze, I kind of wanted the silver to stand out a little bit more, so I went back with some Liquitex Heavy Body Iridescent Bright Silver just to bring out more of the metallic sections. Without having to mask everything off and making sure that the purple matched the rattle can that it already used, I decided to actually spray the rattle can down onto a plate and paint that directly onto the keyblade. Now this method will continually clog your brush, and that's why I have a cup of mineral spirits off to the side that I'm continually washing my brush in. The important thing here is not to get this purple on any of the other finished pieces because it would be very difficult to get it off without stripping the paint down. Because the hourglass pieces are 2mm foam and raised, I have to go in with a liner brush and paint the sides. I use the same Golden Brand Iridescent Bronze to paint the stars on the Keyblade and the moon at the bottom. And because these are also made out of 2mm foam, I have to go back and also paint the sides. Now the jewel here was a little bit of a challenge, and Mars Black at the top and then kind of feathering that down into the jewel. I used the same Mars Black to also finish painting off the leather bound handle. Once that had dried I masked off the jewel and I took a toothbrush along with some Liquitex Heavy Body Parchment and used a splatter technique to help simulate the stars. 
Then using a detail brush, I went back and just made some additional stars a little bit bigger and a little bit brighter. This same toothbrush technique was repeated on the opposite side. After both sides had been allowed to dry, I took some Vallejo gloss varnish and painted it over the surface. This gave a really nice sheen to both of the Galaxy orbs. Last but not least, I got to make the keychain for the bottom of the keyblade. This one will have Mickey's head for the emblem. This design is traced onto some 10mm HD foam and cut out on the bandsaw. I have some lightweight plastic chain still left in the shop, so I cut that to length and glue it to the Mickey emblem. To make the top of the keychain, I just trace a basic pattern onto some 10mm foam and cut that out. This piece is also refined in the sanding station and glued to the plastic chain. A very basic rattle can gold was applied to all these pieces, and then the keychain was glued onto the key blade. And to make sure all the colors matched, iridescent bronze was then painted onto all the keychain pieces. So you guys can see what it takes to foam fabricate a keyblade from Kingdom Hearts. Now remember the template for this particular one is free, it's over in the description section. I would love for you guys to download it and try it out. And remember, a lot of these tips and tricks can be used to simulate just about any keyblade in the series. Now if you guys are using HD foam or building any of my builds, feel free to tag me on Twitter and Instagram at SKSProps because I would love to see your progress. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe, and be sure to swing back by again for more tips and tutorials. Until then, thanks for stopping by.